Tonight, an inmate found dead at the Bear County Jail. A local nun arrested in Washington, D.C. while protesting the detention of migrant children at the border. And blood banks need donors year round, but summer months and holidays often lead to blood shortages around the country and here at home. Thanks for joining us for KSAT News at 9, streaming live from right here in the KSAT 12 newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. It is a big story we have been following all day. Two Castle Hill City Council members arrested, facing charges for allegedly trying to get the city manager fired. Councilwoman Leslie Winger is facing felony charges of tampering with evidence and fraudulent use or possession of identifying information. She's accused of writing down identifying information from the city manager's file. That's things like a birth date or a social security security number and she's accused of harassing the city manager. Councilwoman Sylvia Gonzalez meantime is charged with tampering with a government record. She allegedly attempted to steal petitions that had been handed to the mayor to remove the city manager. She's also accused of misleading a resident to sign that petition. A couple of weeks ago, questions were raised as to whether Gonzalez was properly sworn in on the council, so it's still not clear whether she will be allowed to keep her seat. Tonight on the night beat, we'll hear from the Castle Hills mayor and how he hopes the city can now move forward. A critical nationwide blood shortage is how the Red Cross described its blood supply for the week of the 4th of July. And that isn't the only holiday that affects blood supply. So what's the impact like here locally? Sarah Acosta spoke with the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center about how holidays and the summer affect their blood supply and why one local donor says that she makes time to donate monthly. You're the only one in here right now. Wow, I didn't even realize. It's a summer afternoon in the donor pavilion at the South Texas Blood and Tissue Center. All but one bed is empty. It's not good, but it's normal for summer blood donations, not just locally, but across the country. Last week, the American Red Cross announced a critically low nationwide shortage after the 4th of July. Dr. Samantha Gomez with the center says right now locally, it's not that critical. But when there's a nationwide shortage, everyone is impacted. That's because it starts a chain reaction of blood centers borrowing from other parts of the country. Because the demand is still there. There's still patients that need blood because they have cancer, because they have accidents. During the summertime, there's typically lower amounts of donations. Just take a look at these numbers. These are from the summer months of this year and last year, which didn't meet the need locally, 11,200 donors a month. Blood centers worry about this every summer, and that's because uh, there's, there's no schools in, in session. We see a 20% decline in blood donations during the summer. During the school year, the center is able to have anywhere from 30 to 40 more blood drives a month than during the summer months. But it's not just the summer months that take a hit. Just take a look at how low the donations from the recent holidays compare to the daily need of 400 donations to serve the 48 counties and over 100 medical centers in South Texas. Westerfeld, who tries to donate monthly, says she urges people in the community to get out. You never really know when it's going to happen. Even people with no history of cancer or blood illnesses, it can come out of left field. The center says that they have less than a day supply of O negative and O positive currently in their system. Now, of course, O negative is the universal blood type, but to have that low of a level is dangerous as well for O positive because 36% of people in the country are O, bus are o positive blood type. Myra. Thanks, Sarah. A 24 year old Bear County jail inmate found dead today. A deputy found Leon Casey unresponsive this morning. Deputies, jail medical staff, and fire department EMTs all tried to help Casey, but he died. Casey had been in jail for two weeks for possession of a controlled substance less than one gram. The BCSO Criminal Investigations Division, Internal Affairs, and the Public Integrity Unit will investigate this. Casey's death marks the third high profile incident at the jail in the last five days. I mean, one inmate was mistakenly released from the Bear County Jail on Sunday, and then another was mistakenly released yesterday. Both have since been recaptured. Now let's turn to the night at nine tonight. These are some of the biggest stories making headlines around the world, around the country, and right here at home. More charges announced against the mother and daughter accused of brutally murdering a pregnant woman. More than 30 people are dead after someone set fire to a studio in Japan and a Texas teenager facing charges for spitting into a bottle of tea. Here's tonight's nine at nine. Two Illinois women accused of cutting an infant from his mother's womb 
are now being charged with that baby's murder. Clarissa Figueroa and her daughter Desiree were already charged with the murder and the death of the baby's mother. A bus full of kids returning to San Antonio from church camp catches fire in Blanco County. This happened this morning on Highway 281 north of Johnson City. The engine of that bus caught fire and that fire quickly spread. Everyone on board the bus got off safely. Six children were treated for smoke inhalation. I thank God for his protection over all the kids. Everyone's home safe. Most of their belongings are safe. At least 33 people dead and dozens of others injured in a suspected arson attack at a popular Japanese animation studio. Police say the suspect poured what appeared to be gasoline around the studio, then set it on fire while yelling, die. That suspect suffered serious burns and is in the hospital. Protesters in Puerto Rico are calling on Governor Ricardo Roseo to resign. This comes after hundreds of pages of chats between Roseo and his inner circle were leaked. Those chats included misogynistic messages about San Juan's mayor and homophobic references to singer Ricky Martin. A year after the deadly fire at a San Marcos apartment complex, investigators are still searching for the person responsible. Back in November, the San Marcos Fire Department and the Houston Field Division of Alcohol, Tobacco, Firearms and Explosives announced that the fire that killed five people was set intentionally. ATF is now offering a $10,000 reward for information that leads to the arrest of the person or people responsible. An Odessa teenager is facing a felony charge after allegedly spitting into a bottle of Arizona sweet tea, then returning it to the shelf. It happened in Albertson's grocery store. Police tracked him down after watching the store's surveillance footage. That teen is charged with tampering with a consumer product, a second degree felony. The Mexican government expects to raise about a million dollars auctioning off confiscated luxury items. Among those items, rings, necklaces, bracelets, watches, and a whole lot more. The government plans to deliver that money raised to the needy. Video taken from a helicopter shows the moment a dog gets out of a car, runs down a Florida interstate, and jumps off an overpass. The dog named Scooby-Doo had been riding in the car when his owner was involved in a minor accident and had to pull over. Amazingly, Scooby-Doo survived that. That's quite a drop. You know, it could be, you know, depending on where he landed, it could be up to 17, 18 feet. The dog suffered some scrapes and cuts, but he didn't break any bones. A couple that lost a 20-year-old wedding album in California's deadliest wildfire now has that keepsake back. The couple's home was destroyed in that fire last year. Among the items lost was their wedding album. They were able to track down the photographer, and after years, he still had the negatives. He recreated the album and personally delivered it to the couple. To read more about these nine stories, go to ksat.com slash news at nine. A San Antonio nun among dozens of demonstrators arrested today for civil disobedience at the nation's capital. They were protesting against the detention of migrant children by the federal government. Sister Jean Durrell is a representative of the Sisters of Charity of the Incarnate Word. The protesters entered the Russell Senate Office Building Rotunda, lying on the floor with pictures of some of the immigrant children who died while in detention. Here at home, an event was held at UIW to bring attention to children detentions. Sister Martha Ann Kirk shared a story told to her by a migrant mother and a child staying at the convent. This one told us the story of her brother's head being cut off and she took her young son and ran north and begged for asylum in our country. And so I think it's important that we speak for justice and compassion. The acting Homeland Security Secretary says the situation at the border is unprecedented and that migrant families are coming over in record numbers. He also says detention facilities are less crowded now, especially for children who are only supposed to be held in border holding stations for 72 hours. Meanwhile, the San Antonio Food Bank trying to make migrants in the Alamo City feel more at home. Every day, the Food Bank says it serves a couple of hundred migrant families who are being housed at the city's Migrant Resource Center. But today, they served about 300 migrants an international meal. Jolof rice is a popular African dish. The Food Bank says it's, a, it's something as simple as that, a familiar meal that can bring a lot of comfort. It helps them feel a little more comfortable in knowing there's hope. There's hope for tomorrow, right? 
the power of a meal to really transcend us, to remind us of maybe easier times. The food bank was able to help put together this cultural meal thanks to help from local chefs, immigrant volunteers, and a cook from Africa. Meteorologist Katie Blake with us tonight, and of course it was another hot one out there, mm -hmm. but now we're almost at Friday. We're looking towards the weekend. Yeah, there's not going to be a whole lot of change as we head into the weekend. It will be early next week that we start to bring back chances of rain. So rain free through the weekend, but I think that's okay. And then it'll yeah. give you a chance to go to the pool, run some errands, things like that, and not have to worry about uh, any rain. 75 this morning up to 99 this afternoon. It was hot out there. We have not hit the century mark here in San Antonio just yet. I have us at 99 again tomorrow, uh, but we haven't made it over that hump just yet. I don't know if you're complaining about that. Probably not. Here's a look at high temperatures across the country today. A big story this weekend is going to be a heat wave sweeping parts of the central plains, the Midwest, West and also the northeastern United States. Excessive heat warnings are out in pink that stretches from the plains all the way over to Washington, D.C. Also places like New York City. This heat wave setting in tomorrow, continuing through the weekend. Feels like temperatures or the heat index uh, going to be very elevated for these places in pink. We've got upper level high pressure there on the east coast. It's going to hang around through the weekend. So here's a look at some of the forecast heat index values tomorrow. This really starts to build in from Nebraska over to Iowa, Illinois as well. Check out the feels like temperature tomorrow afternoon in Chicago above 110 degrees. Then as we get into Saturday and then into Sunday, the big time heat continues to push through the Great Lakes and by Sunday uh, that heat will be scorching places like New York and also Washington DC. So a lot of places this weekend will actually be hotter than we'll be here in South Texas. Not necessarily a bad thing. Uh, we've got some great weekend picks coming up, Myra, and in just a few minutes, I'll have that forecast for you, and we'll talk more about rain chances next week. All right, sounds good. Thanks, cool. Katie. Mm -hmm. The Boys and Girls Club of San Antonio mm -hmm. will be able to keep one of their remaining locations open thanks to a million dollar donation. The organization announced they needed $300,000 to keep its clubhouse oh at Candlewood Elementary God. School open. Oh and today, the George and Kim Rapier Foundation awarded them much more. The nonprofit has been hit hard by federal funding cuts and a drop in charitable giving in San Antonio. We've already closed several sites earlier this year and we were looking at having to close additional sites and with this gift we won't have to do that. Our kids and our families will be able to rely on the Boys and Girls Club after school and in the summer. Kim? A one million dollar gift. The Boys and Girls Club char charges fifty dollars for an entire school year and all club members who go to college get a scholarship from the organization. Still ahead on KSAT News at 9 tonight, tensions between the United States and Iran continuing to escalate. Plus, a grand jury has decided against indicting the San Antonio police officer involved in the shooting of a bystander. Those stories and more after the break. Weeknights, streaming live, KSAT News at 9, cutting edge, live from the newsroom. I'm Myra Arthur. A new kind of KSAT. Now let's turn to the 9 at 9 tonight. The day's most interesting stories in just three minutes. Expect information you can put into action. Money, it's personal. Adulting hacks. What's trending online? We're talking about it. And expect some spree thoughts. A curiosity that sometimes gets me in trouble, Myra. KSAT News at 9 on your KSAT app. April 15th is World Art Day, and our city is one great big art exhibit. But AARP in San Antonio thinks today should be your day. So connect with us at our dancing and gardening events, or explore your neighborhood. We're working with you to make it more livable for everyone. We're here in our community helping you live la vida buena. So give life a splash of color, and take on today and every day with AARP in San Antonio. You wouldn't spend $5 for this apple when you could buy this one for 45 cents. So when it's time to replace your windows at your home, don't spend more for the same exact thing. Right now, get eight white double hung windows for $31.95 installed with a lifetime warranty. But don't wait, this is a limited time promotion and don't forget to check out our great reviews online. Let the window source of San Antonio help you save money. Call us today, 210-549-4204. The window source of San Antonio.
A Bear County grand jury decided not to indict a San Antonio police officer for shooting and killing a bystander last fall. 18 year old Charles Roundtree Jr. was killed last October at a home on Robert Street. Officer Steve Casanova went to that home for an assault call. At the scene, police say Devante Snowden reached for a gun in his waistband. Casanova shot at Snowden, but Roundtree was in the line of fire. He was shot and he was killed. The Bear County District Attorney's Office releasing a statement today saying in part, quote, our office presented all the evidence regarding this officer involved shooting to the grand jury. We respect the grand jury's decision and extend our sympathy to the Roundtree family, end quote. It's our favorite part of the week. We're talking about weekend picks and it's full of events that are entertaining yet relaxing. So let's start things with a good laugh. The YouTube comedy group, The Try Guys, is coming to the Majestic Theater this Friday at 7.30 p.m. This show is sure to keep you laughing and entertained with lots of audience participation and tickets start at $39. And all week we've been talking about the celebration of the century, the moon landing. And if you haven't done so, well, you still have a chance this weekend to celebrate the 50th anniversary of Apollo 11 landing on the moon. That's happening this Saturday from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. at the Scobie Education Center. The celebratory event is free and will have activities for people of all ages. And you can wind things down and channel your inner zen with garden and yoga. The San Antonio Botanical Garden is hosting a yoga event Saturday from 10 a.m. to 11 a.m. for $15. The class is outdoors in the Botanical Garden and is great for all ages and skill levels, but be sure to bring your own yoga mat, water, and sunscreen. For more on these events and everything going around town this weekend, you can head over to ksat.com. For The Nine, I'm Alicia Barrera, KSAT 12 News. All right, so weekend right around the corner, people mm -hmm. wanting to make their plans mm -hmm. and really just wondering how hot it's going to be. <laughs> I don't think it's not going to be too hot. We've been spared so far this summer. We haven't had a, a you know, a big heat wave settle in here in South Texas. We haven't even hit 100 degrees yet, so that's pretty good. Yeah, it really hasn't been that bad. Yeah, take some comfort in that. Yeah. yeah. Uh, if you want to do yoga out at the Botanical Garden on Saturday morning, uh, probably going to feel a little bit more like a uh, hot yoga out there. Temperatures will already be in the mid 80s by uh, 10 a.m. on Saturday. We're going to have plenty of sunshine, not only Saturday morning, also all weekend long. Uh, this is a pretty boring weekend forecast. Friday, Saturday, Sunday, very similar days, hot afternoons. Thankfully, we're going to keep the breeze around. It'll start to taper off a bit on Sunday, but still a little bit of a breeze to keep things moving. So last forecast, we were talking about the the big heat wave that will be settling in across the Midwest and Northeast this weekend. So very hot Saturday into Sunday across parts of the country. The heat higher, this ridge of high pressure will settle in over the West Coast by the early part of next week. And what that does is that opens the door for upper level low pressure or a trough to dip down over parts of the Northeast and even allow a weak cool front to move into parts of the Deep South and South Texas. Now this is not going to bring us a lot of drier, cooler air, but what it will do is bring us a chance of some isolated showers and storms by early next week, and that alone will help to bring temperatures down a few degrees. So looking good there. In the meantime, another mostly cloudy start tomorrow for a few hours. We'll have some low clouds, mostly sunny in the afternoon, very hot again and through the weekend. But let's talk about these rain chances next week. Really starting to pick up Tuesday into Wednesday. Hopefully we can bring that coverage Tuesday and Wednesday up a little bit more as forecast confidence grows as we head into the weekend. But nice changes heading into next week. So we have that to look forward to. Yeah, and again, no triple digits. Nope, that's how we like Even it. though you say we can't tell the difference, and I know that you're right. It's mental. It's, it's up all here. up here. Yeah. <laughs> Thanks, Katie. You're welcome. Time for another Throwback Thursday here on the News at 9. This is where we take a look back at the major people, places, and events that have shaped our history. Tonight, we're talking about the Apollo 11 mission. It has been 50 years since this historic moon launch. RJ Marquez recently sat down with the widow and daughter of a local man who worked for NASA during the Apollo era. Tonight, he shares his story. When it comes to the Apollo 11 mission, you may not recognize the name Paul Penrod. Penrod lived in San Antonio for years, but before that was an engineer at NASA. He was one of the first engineers to move to Houston in 1961, when the Johnson Space Center didn't even exist and was just a cow pasture. We were there from day one 
until 28 years later. Florence Penrod fondly remembers her husband and the work he did behind the scenes for NASA. Penrod worked directly with the astronauts on the lunar excursion model and the Apollo missions. Florence said her husband and astronaut John Young helped come up with a plan to remove seats from the module to lighten the weight by 600 pounds. They came back to Houston and redesigned that, took all that out. Paula McGee was only 11 years old when her dad was part of this groundbreaking moment. At the time, I don't think I really appreciated the magnitude of what he was a part of. It was, you know, kind of surreal, I think, as a child to just see that. Penrod was part of a group of thousands who worked tirelessly to get a man on the moon. Neil Armstrong and Buzz Aldrin landed the Apollo Lunar Module Eagle on July 20th, 1969. Armstrong became the first person to step on the lunar surface. This was the celebration of all that hard work. Neil Armstrong's words were, you know, wonderful. Penrod passed away four years ago. What he and many others accomplished will forever be remembered. Throughout the rest of his career in life, he's still, you know, hearkened back to that as being something that he was very uh, proud about. For the Nine, R.J. Marcus. Let's turn now to some of tonight's other big stories. President Donald Trump saying a U.S. warship destroyed an Iranian drone off the Strait of Hormuz. According to the president, the USS Boxer took defensive action after the drone came within 1,000 yards of it. This latest development comes amid heightened tensions between these two countries. Iran recently shot down a U.S. drone flying over the Strait of Hormuz. Disgraced financier Jeffrey Epstein will stay in jail while he waits to go to trial. A federal judge judge denied bail for Epstein today. He's accused of sexually abusing dozens of underage girls. The well-connected multimillionaire was arrested almost two weeks ago on two counts of sex trafficking, and those allegations took place between 2002 and 2005. The judge agreed with prosecutors that Epstein is a flight risk. The Centers for Disease Control and Prevention and the Food and Drug Administration investigating a multi-state outbreak of salmonella infections linked to contact with pig ear dog treats. At least 93 people have been infected in 27 states. 20 have been hospitalized. The FDA says salmonella discovered in pig ear treats can infect people either from handling those treats or directly from a dog once it becomes ill. Let's go to KSAT.com tonight to find out what is trending with Ivan Herrera. Ira, thank you for having me. I do have three great trending stories for you today. All right. First one is kind of a tearjerker, if you will. Uh, so the comedian George Lopez, he bought a airline ticket for a service member who couldn't afford to see his first child being born. Aww. So the story was that he met him at an airport bar. He was actually going to go out of his way to report that he was going to go on leave. And so he started talking to George Lopez and then George Lopez felt for, you know, he felt sorry or, or grateful or whatever it is, right, for the man. He decided to pay the ticket for him to go see his so first, yeah, there. his first child, and so George Lopez even snapped a picture of it and everything. It was it was a cute moment. I That's really loved awesome. that. That's awesome. Yeah, um, it's a so, great story. Yeah, and all over social media, it's it's adorable. <laughs> so the next one is for families and thrill seekers. Ooh, okay. So IHOP is teaming up with Six Flags Fiesta Texas to offer big discounts and not just on the not just on the food on the park like with the parks so ah. the summer savings passport will offer four tickets to the theme park um, and a $50 IHOP gift or, gift certificate for 89.99 nice. which is like 90 bucks I think that's a great deal considering that w a single day ticket to Fiesta Texas is $50.99. Yeah, it's almost, pricey. Yeah, it's almost like 50 Summer's 60. almost over, so maybe yeah. a good way to, you know, exactly. get in some but kick before you go back to school. Here's the kicker. Uh -oh. The deal starts this Friday, but it only lasts through August 31st. So okay. we have more details on KSA.com. We're going to have a lot, uh, a lot more information on there gotcha. than just this. Okay. And then... Uh, since we're on the subject of food, I do want to talk a little bit about Chewy's Tex-Mex uh, restaurant. They're going to celebrate the their 31st annual Green Chili Festival. That's from August 12th through September 31st. And this has been going on for the past three decades. They've been... Yeah. Yeah, so the restaurant had introduced the limited time menu, which consists of green chilies from Hash, New Mexico. Now, some of the offerings include steak enchiladas, 
pork belly tacos, and even a green chili special combo. I gotta say, the tacos that we have featured in that oh, picture on our website, they look, they look pretty good. Yeah. yeah. So I'm excited to try all of that. I actually live near a Chewy, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna go <laughs> check that out. All right. More details on queso.com. And now we're ready for a late night snack. Yes, thank Thanks. you so much for having me. <laughs> Thanks, Ivan. We'll be right back. You hear it everywhere. Healthcare is changing. How can we make sure it's changing for the better? How can cancer be treated more effectively and treatments for rare diseases be created? How can finding a specialist be easier and getting a checkup be more convenient? The physicians and nurses, researchers and residents, therapists and staff of UT Health San Antonio. We're how and your why. UT Health San Antonio. Hi, I'm Daniel Baldwin, and I'm a drug addict, but I've been sober for years. Every day I get emails from parents concerned about their son or daughter. Is this the time they're gonna go to jail, or even worse, die? It doesn't have to be that way. Best decision I ever made, calling sober. My son's got over two years clean now. I no longer worry about the phone, except if he has to say, I love you, Dad. You're gonna be a grandfather. The Sober Recovery Center. Call or text today for help. Freedom awaits. Want to save time and money? Then look for your next car, truck, or RV at Ansira.com. Thousands of vehicles at your fingertips, and that's new or pre-owned. 24-7, shop Ansira.com today. The better way to save. When you're in Port Aransas, how you experience the island life is up to you. You can soak it in, reel them in, go off-road, or go off land completely. No wonder Port A was just named one of America's best family beaches for 2019. Come stay a week and experience the island life. Go to visit portaransas.com to plan your summer getaway. That's all our time here on the News at 9 tonight. Thanks so much for watching. I'm Myra Arthur, and we'll see you right back here tomorrow. Good night.